Hello everybody, today we're going to do a Bible study on the 2300 days. And if you're wondering, why is Michael and I in a car right now, then you got to watch part one because this is part two of the 2300 day Bible study. And we are going to be studying this most important prophecy, uh, something that it would be beneficial for us all to understand. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you will give us clarity in mind, send your Holy Spirit to be the true teacher, and I pray that you'll keep us safe as we travel on the road today, right now. And I pray that you'll please bless this video and bless the hearers who are going to be watching this video as well. Help them to understand more about their Savior and what Jesus Christ has done and is doing for each and every one of us. It's our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So, you're going to have to forgive me about this light because I can't really control it, of course, since we're on a, a, in a car right now. But, in our last video, we left off by dealing with this 2300-day prophecy, which Daniel gets, and Gabriel was commanded to make Daniel understand. But as of right now, Daniel doesn't understand. So in order to make Daniel understand these 2300 days, Gabriel says, I, I'm going to tell you about this 70 week time prophecy. Because this 70 week time prophecy forms a portion of the 2300 days. In order to understand the 2300 days, we need to understand this, 20, uh, this 70 weeks. Now, why? Why would the 70? Why would another time prophecy explain the 2300? And the reason why is because in Daniel chapter 8, we had this time prophecy of this 2300 days. But a time prophecy is useless unless you have a starting point. And the starting point was not given us in Daniel chapter 8. So in this 70 weeks is when God gives the starting point for the 2300 days. And in order to um, find out when this 2300 days begins, it begins at the same time when the 70 week time prophecy begins. They have the same starting points. So let us continue in our study. Why were the 70 week weeks given to the Jews and to the holy city. Daniel 9 and verse 24, the Bible says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. This is why. To finish transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Now my question is, who will finish transgression? Jesus. Who will make an end of sin? Jesus. How will we be made reconciled for our iniquity? Jesus. Who will bring in everlasting righteousness? Jesus. Who is the most holy? Jesus. This prophecy is completely talking about Jesus. So, since this prophecy is dealing with Jesus, he himself understood about this 70 weeks. So let's go to Daniel chapter 18 and verse 21. The Bible, uh, Peter is asking Jesus, and the Bible says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall I for shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but seventy times seven. So here we have seventy times seven that God says we are to forgive our brother who sins against us. How many days are in a week? Seven. Therefore, if we have a seventy week time prophecy, in order to find out how many days are in a week, we have to take seventy times seven. Jesus here in Matthew 18 is alluding to the time prophecy of this 70 weeks that we're studying in Daniel 9. Because 
This seventy weeks is determined upon God's people and upon His holy city. This this teaches us that these seventy weeks, these four hundred and ninety seventy times seven, four hundred ninety day time prophecy, is dealing with the forgiveness of God and how long they have uh, for this forgiveness. And in Bible prophecy, what does a day represent? Ezekiel 4, 6 says, when God is giving his, uh, his people a time prophecy, he says, when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah. Forty days I have appointed thee each day for a year. So when God gave this time prophecy, he says, I've given it you each day for a year. A day in Bible prophecy is a symbol of a year. If we want to understand when God gives us a time prophecy and we want to calculate this time prophecy, we need to first, if it's in weeks, we need to break it down to days because God gives us each day for a year. Once we find out how many days are in this prophecy, then we can apply each day for a year and find out, well, where's the beginning point and count that many years later and find the ending point. And uh, so this 70 times 7 is 490 days, but it's actually 490 years, each day for a year. And Numbers 1434 also says that he gives each day for a year. So that also applies to the 2300 days. It's not really, it's 2300 prophetic days, which is a symbol of 2300 literal years. So, now let's continue in our study. When does the 2300 year and the 490 year prophecy begin? The answer is in Daniel 9.25. Know therefore and understand. Gabriel's saying this right here, what he's about to tell you, is understanding. This is how you will understand both the 70 weeks and the 2300. It says that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So this verse gives us the starting point of both prophecies. It says, from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem. Now if there's a commandment to build Jerusalem, but it does not get restored um, by this decree, then this is not the same commandment. So we are looking at whenever this there is a commandment while the children of Israel are coming out of Babylon. If there is a commandment that gives them a decree, permission to restore and to build Jerusalem, that year begins the 2300 and the 70 weeks. So now my next question, when did this decree to restore and to build Jerusalem take place? And the Bible tells us in Ezra chapter 7 and verse 7, And there went up some of the children of Israel, and of the priests, and the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the Nethanims, unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. Now, if you look according to the margin in your Bible of this uh of Ezra 7 and verse 1. This was Artaxerxes long manus. But uh, it says in the verse 7 that the seventh year of Artaxerxes long manus. Uh, and the seventh year of Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, was 457 BC. This is one of the most easily established dates in the Bible. Artaxerxes made a command to restore and to build Jerusalem in autumn of 457 BC. I would highly recommend, right now, pause the video, I would recommend you to read the entire chapter of Ezra chapter 7 
because it contains the whole story about how Artaxerxes makes this decree to rebuild and to restore Jerusalem. That's the starting point of the 490, um, yes, the 490 and the 2300 days. So now that we have the starting point capable of calculating from that starting point to where the end of the prophecy is. Amen. And specifically in verses 11 through 13 is where he makes it a creep. And uh, verse 21 says, And I, even I, Artaxerxes the king, do make a decree to all the treasures which are beyond the river, whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, shall require of you, it shall be done speedily. So in the seventh year of Artaxerxes, 457 B.C. is our starting point. Like Brother Michael was saying. Now, let's notice what three portions does the prophecy, uh, what three portions of this prophecy does God uh, section off, if you will? Verse 25, going back to Daniel chapter 9. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, 457, unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. There's a the first section. Three score and two weeks. At the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. So God made a distinction between the seven prophetic weeks and the 62 prophetic weeks. But so far, 7 plus 62, that's 69 weeks, when the vision originally gave us 70 weeks. So where's the last or the 70th week of this prophecy? Well, the answer is in Daniel 9, 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This one week is the same week that forms the 70th part, and they go back to back. So obviously, if we've only had 69 weeks, and this one week is going to follow the previous as well. So we see these sections of seven weeks, 62 weeks, and one week. These are very significant because something will happen at the end of the seven weeks, 62 weeks, and one week. They're each time prophecies. So what happens at the end of seven prophetic weeks after 457? Let's read verse 25 again. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore Jerusalem, uh, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Right here, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So, now we have in seven weeks, the Bible says that the street and the walls of Jerusalem will be rebuilt even in troublous times. Now, if you are rebuilding a, a nation or a city, and you, the walls are going to be the um, once the walls go up, then you have completely rebuilt the city, and you are that's when it's finished. So in seven weeks, the, the Jerusalem is going to be completely rebuilt, including the walls, in troublous times. Now, each day for a year, how many days are in seven weeks? Seven times seven is 49. So in 49 years, if you count, starting with 457 to, and uh, go 49 years later, you'll have 508 B.C. when Jerusalem was rebuilt during the time of Nehemiah. And if you remember, it was to be rebuilt even in troublous times. When you read the book of My Nehemiah, you'll find that the times were so dangerous the builders would carry a sword in one hand and a building tool in the other. And they would use a sword to protect themselves from the invaders. The times of rebuilding Jerusalem and the wall was indeed very troublous. Exactly how it was predicted in the book of Daniel. So who would appear at 
after 69 weeks. So we have 457, 408, and then 69 weeks. It says in verse 25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score weeks. So seven plus three score or 62 is 69 weeks. But it says unto Messiah, the Prince. So, uh, 69 weeks is 483 prophetic days, which is 483 literal years. And remember, within the 70 weeks, the most holy was to be anointed. In verse 24, and if we count 69 prophetic weeks, or 483 years from the autumn of 457 BC, we are going to arrive when the Messiah would actually come. Isn't that amazing? Did you know that the Bible predicted not only the year, but even the season when Jesus Christ himself would, the Messiah would come on the scene? That's just amazing. But the Bible has a prophecy of it in the book of Daniel 9. So, um, and also, did you know that there is only one place, one place in the entire Bible where the word Messiah comes from, M-E-S-S-I-A-H, and it's used in Daniel chapter 9 twice, dealing with the, the prophecy of the seven weeks. And we have I, the prophecy of, of, of uh, the Messiah in Isaiah 53, he'd be a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. And, but it doesn't use the word Messiah in Isaiah 53. The only place that it uses the, the word Messiah is in Daniel chapter 9. The New Testament, when, uh, when people call Jesus the Messiah, they are actually referring to this prophecy of Daniel. Some people apply this prophecy to the Antichrist, but this cannot be. Because if you say this prophecy applies to the Antichrist, then you have no biblical justification of saying Jesus is the promised Messiah. Because this is the only prophecy which speaks of the Messiah. Uh, but if we apply it to the Antichrist, we no longer have Jesus as our Messiah. If Jesus did not fulfill this prophecy, he could not have been the Messiah. And I have a question. What does the word Messiah even mean? And according to Strong's Concordance, H4899, Messiah means anointed. Some people think Messiah means Savior, but Matthew 121 tells us that the name Jesus means Savior. And according to Strong's Concordance, G5547, Christ means anointed. Messiah means anointed, and Christ means anointed. They're both the same word, different languages. And when Jesus was speaking with the woman at the well, she, uh, she made it clear that Messiah and Christ are the same name. John 4, 25, the woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will teach us, he will tell us all things. And, uh, and again, if we, if we try to apply this time prophecy that's dealing with the Messiah, when the Messiah would come, to the Antichrist, these are two opposite things. And the Bible says in, in 1 John 2, 22, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. To apply this time prophecy to the Antichrist denies Jesus as being the Christ. And this is exactly what the Antichrist would have us to do. Now, the question is, how 
was Jesus anointed. The Bible predicts in 69 weeks that the Messiah would come on the scene and Jesus would be anointed. Now, where in the Bible does it say this? And you're going to have to tune in for part three on the study of the 2300 days to find out where the year and season of Jesus coming to be the Messiah was going to be found. Have a great day and God bless.